Hello everyone and welcome back to our to-do uh, app tutorial. Um, in the last video, what we did was we created an application uh, that when we previewed it was able to load up information, uh, sorry, load up a list of to-dos that we have stored in the to-dos database. Um, in this tutorial, what we want to do is we want to hook up this button here uh, inside, and this text input box so that when a user will type in uh, an example to-do, uh, or a real to-do, when they press the add to-dos list, it will then be added uh, to this list of to-dos within our app uh, so that they can, I guess, yeah, see what their to-dos are. Um, so in order to do that, uh, we're going to have to perform the same set of steps that we performed in the last tutorial where we retrieved a list of to-dos out of our database. Um, but in this tutorial, what we're going to do is we're going to be creating a new to-do uh, so rather than just getting the information, this time we're going to be setting the information. Um, the process is, is exactly the same as in the last tutorial, um, but with some minor uh, minor differences in the way that we implement each of the each of the steps. Um, so by which I mean, we're going to again, same as in the last video, we're going to be creating a trigger from the front end of our application, which is going to start an endpoint. Uh, or sorry, which is going to signal an endpoint to create a new to-do, which is going to start an action that actually is going to do the creation of the new to-do and is going to then insert that data into the database. And then we're going to get a list again back out of the database so that we can see the new action, uh, sorry, the new to-do uh, directly within our uh, within our front front end web app. Um, in the same way as last time, we're going to generate the computer code uh, that's going to generate the full stack. So you've got your React Redux HTML5 CSS front end, and you've got your Google Go uh, application server, uh, all built around a real uh, database. Um, so to do to set this all up, uh, what we're going to do then first, same as last time, we're going to come over to our endpoints tab, and we're going to start off by creating a new endpoint. Uh, this endpoint is going to wait out and listen, this time for a single to-do that's going to be sent to it, which is going to be um, uh, so we're going to call this like add new to do. So this is going to be the, the name of the, the endpoint. Uh, we're going to give it a path, call it v1 uh, add new uh, to do, like so. Um, now, different from last time where we were getting data out. So our request method last time was set to get. In this case, what we want to do is we want our request method set to post. That's because we're going to be sending, we're, we're sending a record from our endpoint to our action, which is going to then store that information in our in our database. So the request um, the request method in this case is posting data. It's posting a to do uh, to our backend. Um, if we wanted to delete a to do, we would use the delete uh, option here. And if we wanted to update or edit uh, a um, uh, a to do, we would use a put option here. Um, it's simple, but these four request methods uh, are pretty much all you need in order to build full stack software applications. Uh, so if you think about something like a social media application or a landing page even more simply, uh, or maybe a more complex kind of event management platform, in a, the social media world, you might be creating a post. So when you, you know, want to write a particular post, maybe yeah, using one of the social media platforms, you're going to type out a post and you're going to hit submit comment or submit post when you do that you're actually post this is what the social media platform is doing it's posting the information um to the data to a database somewhere which is then storing a record of your comment when you then get you know other people's news feeds and you're kind of scrolling through yours that's just running a get request uh, and if you maybe you've posted up something you made a mistake in it and you want to edit it that's just running a put request. And then if you want to delete your post altogether, that's just running a delete request. So those are kind of the different uh, options that you have there. If we set the request method here to post, uh, because we want to be submitting data. Um, so in the last one, yeah, because we were getting, we got data. Um, but in this case, we're now, our endpoint is going to be receiving a to-do from the front end of our application. So we've got our user, our user is going to click that button, it's going to send a signal, but it's also going to send a single to do record, it's going to send a text uh, string, uh, a, a, a text object, and that is going to, in, that's going to have within it, 
what the to-do actually is. So whether it's walk the dog, um, go and buy uh, fish and chips for dinner, whatever it is, it's gonna be sending that information to our endpoint. So we need to configure our endpoint in such a way that it's able to receive and do something with that, uh, with that, with that new to-do that it's receiving. So um, that's a bit different from the last one we did. And what we're gonna have to use here is a body, a body variable. Um, but in order to use that body variable, we can't just accept all of the data uh, that's associated with a particular to-do because the ID field and the created app field are both automatically created by the Datafy system. Uh, the ID field is automatically created because it has to be unique for any particular row of data. And that's really important because it gives you a way of identifying uh, individual records in a unique way within your within your database. The created app fields allow some sort of auditing on your data so you know when a record was actually created. So these two fields here are important and you wouldn't want the user submitting the ID field because if they submitted the ID field, they might, you know, two users might submit the number three, uh, in which case you no longer have uniqueness within your within your IDs. And the same for the created app. If they could modify when they were sending their records, you wouldn't have an audit trail of when people had been, uh, when actual you know, new to-dos were created. So that what all of that means is that we need to set up an action so it's only going to receive uh, this, one, this one field of data, this name here. Uh, and that means we can't use, uh, we can't use just the, the model data structure. We have to define a custom model data structure. Um, we can't simply take this model because we don't want the user to fill in these two. We have to create a custom one with just a name. Now, in order to do that, you can come over to the custom models tab down here at the bottom of the screen, and you can press the new custom model up here. Uh, and then you have a choice. You can either create a new model from scratch, or you can use the generate model here. I'm gonna use the generate model because I'm a little bit lazy, uh, and I just wanna generate the model from a table. Uh, and at the table we want is the to-dos model here. So I'm gonna press the generate button there. Now that's going to generate a custom model that's identical to our um, the, mo uh, the model that's storing all our to-dos. Uh, but we, like we said, we don't want the ID and we don't want the created that. So we can click the X, uh, and that's going to remove that from the list. And we can also change this just to say single to-do because that's more reflective in terms of a name of what this here this model is actually doing. It's a single to-do. It's not all the to-dos. It's just the to-do field, and it's only one uh, of those uh, one of those records. Uh, and then we just press the generate, and that's going to generate that model here. Uh, if you want to see what's been generated, just to like double check it, you can click on it. Uh, so you can just select it by clicking directly, and that's going to open up this page here, uh, which shows you that you've just got this name uh, and a kind, which is of text uh, of text type. So press the X at the top to exit out of that. Uh, and then you can go back over to your endpoint and we can actually now use uh, that within our within our body variable here. So inside our endpoint, we're now going to click on this button here. That's going to load up a new variable pop up. From this drop down here, we're going to select then a custom model. We're going to call this single to do. Uh, and we're going to take a name as well, which we're also going to call single to do. Uh, now we're going to set this required to a check mark. Uh, this is because we don't want the user, or we, it wouldn't really make sense if the user was sending nothing back to us. We want them to be sending a to-do, uh, a walk the dog, go and get fish and chips, whatever it is. But we want them to be sending a to-do. So we're going to require this, this a variable, this field here to be filled out when it's sent back. Uh, and we now get an option to select a custom model. And the custom model that we're going to select is, of course, our single to-do model that we just created. We press the Save button here, and that's now added that there. Uh, and we can press the Save button here at the bottom, and that's going to save that entire endpoint. The next thing that we're going to do is we're going to come over to the Actions tab up here, uh, and we can add a new action on the top right-hand corner of the screen by pressing the New Actions button. Um, this action is going to be the action that starts and actually creates new data uh, for our or creates a new to do in our in our database. 
Uh, so we're going to call this action add a new to do. So when the endpoint receives that new to do, it's going to forward or it's going to automatically start up. It's going to trigger this action. Uh, so we're going to say we're not going to use the get all to do's data because this action is going to be associated with the add new to do endpoint. When the add new to do endpoint is run, that's going to trigger this action to start. Um, we're then going to save that down here. Now, different from the get uh, the get action that we made before, the action that is going to be creating a new record needs to have an event added to it. So we actually need to use this time the actions events graph on the right hand side of the screen. Um, if you press uh, the little plus button, if you click on the little plus plus button, which is to the uh, just here, uh, that's going to create a slide out. So inside here, you can add events and you can chain events to events together uh, in this actions events chart here. Um, if you want to go back in and change an event afterwards, you can just click on it here and then to close it, you can either press the cross or you can click uh, on the background over here and that will that will slide that away. Um, in our case, what we want to do is we want to have a create event, which is going to be creating data uh, to a, creating a new to do in our database. But uh, if you click the drop down here, you have quite a lot of options. You've got create, delete, update, assign. You can do more complex stuff like uh, uh, read and write uh, read and write files uh, from the database. Uh, and then you can also do things like run HTTP requests. So if you want to integrate with a third party API like WhatsApp, Twilio, um, I don't know, uh, Google Analytics, something like that, you can set this up uh, here to, to run HTTP requests. So that can run pretty much against any third party API uh, in the world. Um, and then you've got a, but in our case, yeah, we just, and you, yeah, sorry, you can do other things like start and stop processes, send emails, uh, log in and log out users and so on. But in our case, yeah, we just want to have a create, um, a create event here that we're adding to this, to this, this workflow because we're going to be creating a new to do. Um, so in order to create the new to do, what we're going to do then is we're going to select the data, the bit of the database that we want to change, which is our to do's table. This is what we call this table in the last video is to do's. So we select that model there. We're then going to take values uh, inside that to do's model and we're going to give, we're going to give, sorry, we're going to assign values that we send in from our endpoint to uh, a uh, particular column in our data in, in our, in our to-dos table. So as we know at this point, uh, we're sending a single to-do, which is just the name of a new to-do. So the only field we want to assign here is the name one. We don't want to assign the ID and the created app because these two are automatically generated by the Didify system. Um, so what we're doing, going to do here is we're going to press add over here. And that's going to give us a list of options about what we want to assign to what value. So which field in the database, whether it's ID created at or name, do we want to assign to the value? In our case, the value that we have comes from our endpoint and it's just the single to do name field. So we're only going to, we only have that option. We don't want to do the created at or assigned. Uh, and the as uh, item here, this is, uh, this is not, um, uh, not particularly important for now, but let's just, uh, this is the, the response variable for the event. We don't actually need it, but we have to set it. Uh, so let me just fill this in now for like to do uh, name, something like that. Let's take a bit of space in the middle and press save. Uh, and then I can close this down again just by having, pressing that or by clicking on the background. Uh, and then I save here. So now what we've done from our diagram is we've set up our endpoint and our action. Our endpoint is configured to receive information from the front end of our system to then start an action, which is then going to insert a new record in our data model and then send that information back to, um, and then, sorry, yeah, it's just gonna insert a record into our data model uh, and that's that's all we wanna do for the moment. Um, so let's just generate the code for this and test out our endpoint and action. So we click the generate code button and we give a uh, quick comment. So generate uh, some code uh, and just press generate there. So as I mentioned in the last tutorial, uh, what's happening here is we're actually generating real uh, full stack computer code. So the system's actually writing that code for you. 
Um, once that's completed, so the build is complete, we're going to press the run button up here at the top right hand corner of our add new to do, our add new to do um, endpoint. Uh, and that's going to simulate uh, that we've received the request from our endpoint so we can test it out. So when I press run, you'll notice that you get this pop up box. Now, if we go back to what we did in the last tutorial, which was uh, um, getting all of the to do's data, when we press that run button here, all we received was just a 200 response. We didn't get a pop up uh, and it just returned that list of to do's. But in this case, we get a little pop up. And the reason for that is um, if we go back to this training um, diagram quickly, we would normally be we want in the end our ultimate goal is that the user is going to click on a button and that's going to submit a signal to our endpoint and our endpoint is then going to start um it's then going to sorry it's going to receive some information which is then going to start an action with and then that action is going to insert that to do that bit of information it receives from the front end into the data model um, in our case we're forcing the simulation to happen from our endpoints tab uh, because we haven't built the user's web app portion yet uh, we're going to do that uh, next um, but uh, yeah so we're going to force it which means that if I go back into our add to do's and I press the run button that's forcing that signal to be sent so we have a single to do that we need to enter here so what I'm going to do is I'm just going to enter an example single to do uh, which we can have uh, buy some fish and chips like uh, that uh, and press the run button down here in the bottom of the screen. So the same as last time uh, we did this, we're gonna get a 200, uh, 200 response if we successfully set all of this up, uh, but we don't get anything back this time. So we don't get that list of to-dos because we're submitting data in this case, we're sending a to-do to our database. Um, but what we should be able to do if we've done everything correctly uh, is we should be able to come over to our table uh, and if we refresh this table, we should actually see that new to do uh, in our uh, in our database now. So here you can see we've got buy some fish and chips. That's a new to do that we've got. Uh, and actually, as well, if we go back to our page and we preview this, uh, this should also now have the buy some fish and chips on here as well, because now we've still got that whole process set up that we built last time. We're just incrementing on top of it. Um, so that gives you that kind of that first that first section of the application so what we've done here is we've built our endpoint we've built our action we've created that new to do in the data model the last thing that we need to do to make this kind of ready to go is we need to set up our workflow uh, from our front end and our signal which is going to trigger this endpoint in the back end so let's do that quickly now um, different from last time so last time what we did was we set up this variable here which was a collection so this was going to hold a list of information that came back from our endpoint uh, if you remember and then it was going to take that list and it was going to represent it in this repeating group uh, down the page in this instance what we want to do is we want to allow the user to type in a text input here press the button and send that information to uh, to our workflow which is then going to start the endpoint uh, and and set that field in the in the database. So in this case, it's slightly different. We need a variable this time to to hold uh, the data or the to do that's going to be entered into this text input. So we need a new variable, and that variable is going to be called uh, single to do. Let's say it's going to be of kind text, uh, and we're not going to set an initial value for it. And we're just going to press save on that. So now you've got your single to do. Uh, down here so um, the next step in the process then will be to set up the workflow so this was our workflow from last time where we were getting information so when we got information if you recall we ran an endpoint uh, and that endpoint returned a response uh, that response was then used when we were to set a field um, so we took that all to do's endpoint response we took that response and we put it into this collection. So we took the list of to do's and we put it into this all to do's collection. And then we represented that on this page. In this case, what we're doing is we're getting a single to do uh, and we're sending that to the back end uh, to, to our endpoint. So our workflow in this case is going to be slightly different. If I press the new, uh, the new action button up here and I create a new workflow, 
this workflow is called uh, well, let's call it um, add uh, new to do something like that uh, and just press the save button down here I'm going to add uh, an event to my events graph my actions events graph and I've got that set to run endpoint uh, the endpoint that we're going to run in this case is going to be the add to do uh, we're going to get a response code uh, so add uh, new to do uh, endpoint uh, response uh, but we don't actually really care about this at, at the moment um, what you can do is you can check that response code that 200 uh, code that we get in uh, when we run one of these uh, endpoints that 200 code you can set it up so that you check that to validate that you know a 200 message or, or an error message or something like that but in this case, let's, let's not bother with that for the time being. What we do care about, though, is we want to make sure that the body variable that we're sending to our endpoint is correctly set. So in this case, our body variable is going to be equal to the, um, the variable that's going to be associated with our text input box on our page. So that's going to be the single to do text input box. I'm going to press OK there and save just to really hammer that point home uh, that single to do here is the single to do that we created here which we're now going to take and we're going to associate that single to do using this little cog over here we're going to associate that with an input variable here in fact i've already done it uh, before uh, but we're going to take that with a single to do text here uh, and press ok there so that's our input variable which the user is going to type into this text input. Uh, and then when they press this button, that text input is going to get sent. This variable here is going to get sent to pass to this workflow, uh, which is going to set a body variable in our endpoint. Uh, that's the get one in our endpoint. So here in our add new to do endpoint it's going to set that single to do here which is then going to pass that single to do to our add new to do uh, action, which is then going to use that single to do uh, and assign that to the name field in our database, which is then going to give us a new to do stored here. So that's the whole workflow all the way through. Um, so if we just come back to our workflow quickly and press the save button, uh, what would also be nice at this point is would also be to run an action also to run a get our, our get um, workflow as well so when we have our get all to do's from last time once we've added it it will also be nice to actually see that the information is added within our app so when the user presses the button uh, they can also see that information getting set and the easiest way to do that is to come here rather than doing the set field like we did last time to get all to get that list of information we can just run uh, run the action or run the workflow that we used last time so we can do get all to do's down here and that's probably just an easier way to do it because it's already set up so that action now is going to uh, when that gets run it's going to run the get all to do's so then it's just going to refresh that list uh, of all to do's down here so um, that's the complete process end to end uh, we're now typing in this input box here uh, and then the only thing actually sorry that we need to do uh, left in this whole process is we need when the user clicks this button uh, we want to just make sure that we actually are going to be starting the workflow off so here we've got uh, the option um, to add a workflow we're going to pick a trigger the trigger we're going to pick is of course on click uh, and we're going to select an action here and of course the action that we're going to pick is going to be the add new to do action um, so now when the user types in here and they press this button here that's going to start the add new to do uh, action uh, which over on this workflows page is this action here which is going to run the endpoint which is going to send that single to do that new to do that we're adding all the way back through to our database over here so that's kind of the process now done um, so the same as last time you can come up here press save uh, so that's file and then down to the save button and press save uh, and then you can just regenerate the code uh, for that final that final bit i'm just going to double check 
here. So that's add to do on there. I'm just going to check my variable here as well it is correctly bound. That's an input variable. So it's the user's inputting data. So that's all correct. Uh, I'm just going to regenerate my code here. So um, uh, code for the app, uh, generate the code. Um, so again, yeah, this is now updating all my code. So it's uh, updating the, the front end code uh, for the new workflow, adding the new variables and so on, doing whatever it needs to do to, to, to check that that's all correct uh, in the system. Uh, now we can test out our full app by pressing the preview button over here. Uh, so when our app loads, you've got walk the dog, buy some bread, buy some fish and chips. So if we want to test, uh, we can do, uh, let's do a test uh, to do and press the add to do list button here. And you see now we get a test to do popping in at the bottom of this list. Uh, and that's because we've now created that, that full workflow all the way through. Uh, so we can also see if we come to our table and just refresh uh, our application again, uh, we can see here that test to do is now in our database as well. So if you think about the implications uh, of what we've just put together now, uh, I know it's kind of very simple with this uh, to do app, but you can now build a website uh, that was able to take, for example, subscription data for new users because you can build a little table uh, like this on the first page, a little text input box. You can allow users to enter their usernames and passwords, and you now know how to set it up so that when the user presses the submit button uh, or presses a submit button, they'd be able to send all that information back to the back end of your system. So you're able to build now something which actually has some real utility in it uh, for, 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 for your users. Um, the final thing that I wanted to just go through uh, today, oh sorry, today in this particular tutorial uh, is I just wanted to do a bit more styling on this because uh, it looks a bit messy. So if we double click on the text here, you can just edit this. We can just have add to do because it's only one to do. Um, the other thing that we could do here, uh, if we select the text input component is we could add some padding around it. So you can do like, make them look slightly larger. Um, we can match this up here as well. So there's a whole bunch of things that you can do on the styling of the applications. Um, and we'll go through that, I think probably more in detail another time like we could bring this down a little bit down the page. Uh, we can probably take our the repeating group that we had last time and we can probably separate that by like another 20 pixels or something. So it just looks a little bit neater. Uh, and then we could probably extend this width to maybe uh, like 80% uh, or something of the box. Um, yeah, something like that. I, I'm not quite sure, but we can we can start to play and make that a little bit nicer now uh, as well. Um, and then actually, sorry, just really quickly, the very final thing that I wanted to do, because this uh, this kind of summarizes how to build these these types of applications is uh, I just want to show you where you can get the code uh, for your application. So once you've generated it, you can see here that I'm in this test app here. Uh, but what I can do, if I go back to my workspaces, which is where all of this stuff lives, and I scroll down to my test app here, what I can do is I can click on this little arrow here, and then I have um, underneath my app, I have an option for get app code. So if I click that get app code here, I have an option here to access that code. I can access it in two ways. I can either take the code that I've generated and I can publish it directly to a GitHub repository by pressing the publish repository button. Um, or I can actually download that computer code directly onto my uh, computer. Uh, and to just give you a very quick view uh, of how that um, of how that computer code looks, if I download that uh, code here, just delete some of my old files, and I'm just to unzip this uh, computer code, You've got two chunks of code here. You've got your back end code and your front end code. If we just look very quickly inside the back end code, uh, you can see actually the endpoints that we've built here written in Google Go. So you've got the get all to do's data endpoint that we made, and you've also got the endpoint add new to do endpoint. So if I was to like right click uh, and open this up with my notepad editor, and I expand this window here, 
you can see that all of this code is correctly formatted. You've got correct indentations. Uh, yeah, you've got it's 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 proper proper Google Go code uh, written according to the coding standards standards that Google set out. So that actually is like a, a major add-on of the Dedify uh, Design Studio is that that whole application that we've made uh, actually is building in the background real source code, which you can just pull out of the system like that. So um, I think probably we'll stop that for this particular tutorial. In the next tutorial, I'm just gonna clean up uh, the styling of the app a little bit to make it a little, little bit nicer. Uh, and I'm gonna do a delete uh, and then uh, edit a uh, bit of functionality for your app as well, uh, because then you have the ability to uh, get all information out of your database. You'll have the ability to uh, create new records in your database. Uh, and then you also have the ability to update records uh, and then uh, yeah, edit records. So giving your user the option to go in and edit a post, for example, on a social media platform or edit the time of an event on an event management platform um, or yeah, any type of editing. Uh, and then uh, so that would be delete, create, uh, get, um, and also create um, also uh, uh, update uh, update records as well. So that, yeah, those are all all of the all of the main things um, involved in pretty much any application. Uh, they're known as the CRUD commands, the create, read, update, delete. So I'll go through the update and delete in the next couple of tutorials, as well as cleaning up the application front end a little bit. Um, I hope that was helpful, and looking forward to seeing uh, as many of you as possible on the next uh, tutorial as well. Thank you very much.